in his time of persecution and his time of tribulation, he took refuge in the Lord. And here the writer of Hebrews tells us that we take refuge in God because he cannot lie. So one of the places that we run to, instead of complaining, instead of getting bitter, instead of giving up, we run to God's word, to the expectation of his word, not just to read it and be like, oh, how nice, but to believe it and understand that what God says will come to pass because it is immutable. It is unchangeable. Everything else would fade, will be destroyed, but the word of God will remain. And notice what he says here. He says, and the writer of Hebrews says in verse 19, he says, this hope, which is not just a regular hope. It's not just, oh, it may be. But the hope that the Bible talks about is a very different hope than the word that we use in the English vocabulary. The word that hope that is used in the Bible means expectation. When he says we have a hope of the resurrection, it's not that it may or may not be, but it means that we expect for it to happen. And he says this hope or this expectation we have as an anchor of the soul. If it's a maybe, then it's not an anchor. This hope is an expectation that we have, is an anchor of the soul. It says both sure and steadfast. Because it is impossible for God to lie, his words are like an anchor to our soul. And Brother Lewis, as a fisherman, he knows exactly what an anchor is and what it's for. And and I've heard many stories from Brother Lewis, maybe he'll share one tonight, of the importance of being able to have an anchor in times of a storm. Because no matter how high the waves come, no matter how heavy the current is, no matter how violent the storm is, his word is sure and will keep us in peace. Going back to John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, These words have I spoken unto you. And the words that he is speaking, if you read in the beginning of the chapter, one of the things that Jesus mentions is the fact that he's telling his disciples that the, the Holy Spirit is going to come. After he leaves, after Jesus Christ leaves, the Holy Spirit will come to take his place as a comforter here on earth. And, and Jesus tells us one of the reasons why we can take courage. He says, be of good cheer or be, or be of good courage. Why is it that we can have courage in our time of tribulation? It is because God is with us. The Holy Spirit is God. God is the Holy Spirit and he is with us. In those times of trouble, in those time, times of tribulation, those people, the, the People may leave us, though our friends may abandon us. When we hit hard times, many people may leave our lives. But you know what? God is still there. God hasn't left. God is with us through through uh, lows, highs, and lows. Whatever it may be, God is with us. And we need to say, you need to say, God is with me. God is with me. I shall not fear. God is with me. He will help me. Look at what the book of Isaiah says, Isaiah 43, 1 through 2. This is one of my uh, one of my favorite verses. He says, But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I will be with thee through the rivers. They shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. And though he's speaking in this context of this verse to the nation of Israel, this applies to the believers in a spiritual sense. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, no shall the flame scorch you. We see this when we read the story of Daniel's friends, the ones that did not bow down before the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible says that they're thrown into a furnace of fire. And that when they're in the fire, when the three of them are in there, they were able to absorb, uh, observe that there was a fourth person in that fire with them. 
And the same is true for us, brothers and sisters. When we go through the fires of, of tribulation, the Lord is with us there in that fire. And the Bible says that when they were taken out, that they didn't even have the smell of smoke on their bodies. The Lord was with them. He says it was like the, it was. He was. It looked like the Son of God it was Jesus. Jesus was with those boys that were thrown into the fiery oven. God is with me. God is with me. I shall not fear. God will help me. He is with us through the fire. And then thirdly, Jesus says, "Be of good courage." In John sixteen thirty three, I have overcome the world. Because Jesus has overcome the world, suffering will not be permanent. Our walk in this world is temporary. Many of the trials and tribulation that we face are a reminder that this is not our home. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we as Christians, we get too comfortable. We get too comfortable thinking that, you know what, um, we get caught up in building a life for ourselves that we forget that we are only here temporarily. There are people that spend so much of their time working to buy things, to buy homes. We, we, we mentioned about this when we were speaking about the, the topic of death. People that neglect their families because of their careers, and they ultimately neglect God. And God allows trials and tribulations to come so that we can refocus our eyes on the fact that this is not our home. And we should not put our confidence in it or the things that it offers. But that there will be one day that we may experience temporary pain now. We shall have eternal joy in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ where, we will, where, where there will be no pain. Where there will be no suffering. Where there will be no grief or sorrow, no death, but eternally be with Jesus. We must remember, brothers and sisters, that no matter what it is that we're going through, it will pass. It will pass. And the only thing that is so important is to proclaim the gospel to our family members. Proclaim the gospel to our friends. That when we suffer a loss, that they may be and they may go to be with the Lord so that one day we will also be reunited with them. The only thing that has no remedy after death is a person who has rejected Christ. Listen, your biggest problem if you have not put your faith in Christ is not the situation that you're facing right now, is the fact that one day you will die. And if you have not put your faith in Jesus, it does not matter what it is, what blessings or suffering you may have in this life, it will be nothing compared to that that will be faced on the judgment of God if you do not put your trust in Jesus. Because the Bible says that Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. That is the most important thing that you can do is to put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the sufferings are not compared to the glory that waits for those who put their trust in Jesus, that waits for those who put their trust in God. And we have to understand that, you know, God is in control. Even in the midst of this, I will rejoice because He is who He is and that I am still His son or daughter. And I will not allow my faith to be shaken because Jesus is with me in this fire. And even in my sufferings, He suffers with me. Amen. Brother Javer asked that I tell you a story about an anchor. It was many years ago that I decided that I was going to spend some family time. So my son was a small, and I said to my wife, let's go out and fish for a little while. And we went out of the cut and went out a few miles offshore. And as soon as I anchored the boat, I noticed that suddenly the weather changed. The sky got black and I saw sun thunderstorms and I knew that danger was on the horizon. So I quickly picked up the anchor and I sped as fast as I could to the inlet, but it was so far away that I couldn't reach it. And when I looked towards the land, I found a way in. So I sped full force to that small opening. And I looked and I saw 
a bridge. And I remember that I went there as quick as possible. I threw the anchor, one in the front of the boat and one in the back. And right when we got under that bridge, the storm hit. And it was torrential rain, there was thunder, and there was hail. But those two anchors held that boat under that bridge where it didn't move and we were protected until the storm passed. And you know, brothers and sisters, one thing that we could be sure, no matter what storm that we may face in life, if we wait on the Lord, he will give us peace. And in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 8, the word of God says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you may be facing today, but I'll leave you with this verse in 1 Samuel twelve sixteen. Now then, stand still and see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. Stand still. It doesn't matter the storm. They may come your way. God is with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think that's a wonderful, amazing story, Brother Lewis. I cannot imagine how it must have, uh, how great of an Im- like impact, the fact that the, it was raining so hard and the motion of the boat, how that could put fear into a person. But it is about the anchor. There's a wonderful story that we read that's very similar to actually what uh, Brother Lewis was mentioning. And it's found in the book of Luke. It's found in the book of Luke, chapter 8, starting in verse 22. And this is what the scripture says. It says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, speaking about Jesus. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid, wonder, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. So they were crossing over the lake or the um, Sea of Galilee. And on the way that they were crossing, with Jesus being on the boat, he fell asleep and they encountered a storm. And the very first thing that they did was wake up Jesus. And Jesus gets up and he calms the winds, and the storm. And that, brothers and sisters, is a picture of peace. I think that if you've ever experienced a day after a hurricane, there's a very calmness. There's a calmness before the storm, and there's a calmness after the storm. And it, and this is kind of like the emotions that we are experiencing inside of us. I don't know about you, but when I experience, when I experience extreme anxiety... I have difficulty grasping my thoughts. My heart beats very quickly and it is just a onslaught of different emotions exploding or um, it is an onslaught of intense emotions. And only Jesus has the ability to make those winds to cease and to give us that peace that we need to get to to the other side. Because after all, we're all on a journey. We're all, we all have a destination and God knows what is our destination and he will make sure that we arrive there and that we do what we are called to do. And sometimes we forget that Jesus is on the boat. We neglect him. We do not seek him in prayer. We seek, we try to figure out our own things to do. We try to find out ways that we can resolve the problem without first seeking him. And we don't realize that the one that has the power to seize the winds and the waves and the rain is Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can give us that peace. Jesus is the only one that can stop the storm that is raging inside of us. 
and around us. Amen. Once the storm went through, brothers and sisters, I remember that I looked 